Up next for popflypopshop.com. He isn't just versed in baseball, but in five languages. With a master's from ASU, he's as strategic with academia as he is with infield shifts. After 12 major league seasons, he became the first major leaguer to play for Italy, setting records with a bat that spoke louder than words. They say he can turn a fair ball foul with only the power of suggestion. As a rookie, his mentor was none other than the great Ted Williams. By night, he traded baseball diamonds for the stand-up comedy spotlight in Chicago in exchange for steak. In Seattle, he rallied his fellow ball players, and together, they laid down a funk track that wasn't just groovy. It was a fundraiser anthem for a fan in need of medical assistance. To the kids he's coached and the scholarships he's funded, he's more than a mentor. He's a game changer. Lenny Randall, scholar, athlete, and truly the most interesting man in baseball. Absolutely. Hey, welcome. We are here live. Uh, to my left is the artist and owner creator of Pop Fly Pop Shop. Say hello, Daniel. Hello, folks. And over here to my uh, right is the ASU Hall of Fame for not just baseball, y'all, baseball and football. Lenny Rando, how are you doing today, sir? Bella, bonissima, bravissima, incredible, and uh, come dice, and and the gato, and the uh, come down, sir. So if you don't understand, I mean, what's up? <laughs> <laughs> Best intro so far. Um, real quick before we get into some of the fun stuff. Um, if you have a question you want to ask Lenny Randall yourself, submit that right now. And if we use it, you will get a giveaway. And let me just be honest, this particular giveaway is a good one. So you want to get that question in. Um, if you don't know what this totally is, uh, Pop Fly Pop Shop is Daniel has different drops for baseball, football, sometimes pop culture. Uh, this week it is Lenny Randall and it expires this Sunday forever. So go ahead and go to popflypopshot.com. Daniel, can you show that print? There is an autograph um, option on there. So get it by Sunday before it is retired forever. Right off the bat, uh, Lenny Randall, we usually ask this of, of all the players. Did you have any connection to like comic books as a kid? Well, it's kind of like this. We all did. But remember when we had certain things in our bicycles it were pro baseball cards you know? <laughs> <laughs> and every time i had them in the spoke people go dude that's a five dollar card i'm going so what does that mean i like the noise of a motor <laughs> a bike when i put the clip onto the bike back yeah. of it five you know it was dodgers it was woolly mays was dodgers it was uh maury wills it was tommy disorder they had cards and i went oh if you stick the plug Onto the wheel in the back, it goes bah, 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 sound like a motorcycle. So I thought I was like a Harley Davidson guy on a bike. <laughs> yeah, but you're on baseball cards. Is this, this is your first time like on a comic book cover? Well, I, I'm a, I'm really shocked because when when he told me he was a comic book color guy, I went, I better check his ID. Let me check his roots. And I did a root <laughs> background check on him. You know, uh, Van Nuys, West Covina. I looked. At, like, I talked to Louis Tiante in okay. Cuba. I talked to, uh, you know, I do I do background checks. And when I do a background check, I talk. I talk to uh, Gene, who's the new manager of the California Angels. And I said, before I come and try to be an angel, I got to deal with this pop shop guy who's trying to get me to talk to him, and I don't know about him. He goes, oh, he's okay. He did Tiant. Go call his son, Deontay. So I call the son, then I call Louie, and Louie goes, smoking a cigar. Lenny, bravo. He's okay. Yeah. I take, I take him to Cuba, maybe. I go, Cuba? No, you're not going back to Cuba. Are you kidding me? He goes, no, I sell more in Cuba than America. <laughs> Your friends, so, are you friends with Ron Washington? Is that what you said? Ron Washington, I'm going to go see him today and tomorrow because I might end up working with the Angels because I take, when I come back from Italy, after my 31 players that I take, like Sam Bruno, who's coming from Rome, Italy, to be a catcher, outfielder with Palm Springs, Sam Domatio, 
who's in okay. punk head coach. So I bring the players from Italy over to America. And I take the American players, Craig Nettles, Fergie Jenkins, Ron LaFleur. I take them over to Italy, and they don't ever want to come back. So Ron <laughs> Washington wanted to go with me and Steve Henry because we won a senior league championship in Florida. He goes, Lenny, you keep up with me. I think I might be Italian with the, uh, the Tuskegee Airmen guys. I go, what? Yeah, the Tuskegee Airmen were with Ted Williams, your manager. I go, what? What are you talking about? My uncles were in, in Miami. I got babies over there. <laughs> 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 so, too, so all my teammates got babies <laughs> in Italy. <laughs> all right. Hey, when I, when, I, when I take over, Daniel, Daniel might have a child over there on one day layover. I don't, I don't know. <laughs> all right. Well, I'm, a, I'm an Anaheim Angels fan. Uh, tell Wash we're all in. My my daughter, we're all in. We're, we're trusting in him. Um, hey, Lenny, every now and then something happens in baseball where baseball literally changes their rules because of a – there you go – because of a player <laughs> or because of a play. So, you know, he's trying to brainwash me to be an angel. Go ahead. I'm sorry. Yes. So, like, okay. Bob Gibson throws a 1.12 ERA. Baseball lowers the match. Plus, okay. Rosie gets trucked. They change the rule at catcher. Otani enters baseball. They make right. new rules about pitchers and DHs. Mm -hmm. You caused a new rule to be in baseball. So let's talk yeah. about the play. One of 20? Which one? <laughs> <laughs> let's talk, and, and, and can you show the cover again, Daniel? Because it, it's it's sprinkled into your cover. First question yeah. on the, this is – I think this is the most famous play in all time of baseball. Anytime stadiums show, like, blooper clips – this is in there. Any, I remember watching Wacky World of Sports as a kid. This was in the intro. So okay. was this the first time you blew a ball foul? Now, my attorney is Dan Jr., okay, just so you know. <laughs> and he's eight also years old. Also a alum, yes. Yeah, so I did not blow on the ball. I yelled. There's no rule about yelling <laughs> or blowing at the ball. My Daniel lawyer knows. He's eight okay. years old. That's with him. Okay, so retracted. I, Was this I the first time you yelled ball. at a ball? I've yelled since college. So you did this before in college? I, I even yelled during golf, and I'm not as good as Tiger Woods. Yeah. <laughs> I even yelled with Fernando Venezuela when we golf. Every time we golf, he keeps two socks and two balls in each sock. And then if him and Lasorda or Dave Bell or Steve Garvey can't find the ball when we're golfing, they'll go, oh, Lenny, the ball fell out of my sock. It's right over there. I'm going to do That's cheating. <laughs> but Lenny, you got to remember, everybody has their own rules. Evan, you have your own rules. I played ball, Billy Martin ball. I played yes. Ted Williams ball, Joe Torrey ball, Willie Mays ball. Those are my mentors. Ernie Banks, Roy Campanella. I was one of the greatest players in the history at birth with Maury Wills. I'm eight years old. He's playing guitar at my freaking baseball clinic. And I'm going, wait a minute. He's a shortstop playing guitar? I'm like, yeah, I can do that. He sings? I can do that. Then Don Drysdale walks on and goes, hey, me and Albie Pearson came to see you and Wayne Simpson, the 105-mile-hour fastball guy. You're short like Albie. You could make it in the big leagues. And I'm going, dude, who are you? I'm looking up to him. Like, He's 6'6". Six, six. I'm scared of the guy. <laughs> and so when we got scouted, I saw things that no one in the history of baseball saw. At early, from Tommy Lasorda, they all had to live in Compton with Duke Snyder, who's from Compton, and people don't even know it because they wouldn't live in, let them live in Brentwood or Hollywood or Westwood. They go in Lynwood and Compton, Linwood and Compton, okay? And it was a mythical because they were soldiers man if you look at the i look at the whole history of guys telling me the story and i'm like i'm naive i'm 12 i'm going god they look happy they, they got their own business they're playing for the dodgers they were in the coliseum there's no such thing as coliseum baseball today people don't know that stuff my dads and uncles all seven of them were in the negro league so willie mays and ernie banks and Billy williams and all those guys bob gibson said lenny don't sign with the freaking cardinals i go what Ask Lou Brock. They didn't treat us good. They only gave us $6,000. Go get your $150,000 degree in college and then sign with the Cardinals. And I was their number nine pick. And then out of college, I was a number one pick. So I listened to the veterans. You know, if I had a guy like Dan, his son, eight years old and a genius, I listened to him. 
I can't go around <laughs> going, Reggie Jackson recruited me in South Bando on Rick Monday. Lenny, don't sign yet. We're going to be in the NCAA player playoff, and we're going to get drafted number one, two, and three at one hundred fifty thousand by Charlie Finley and Nancy Finley, and you're their friend with their daughter. I go, how do you know that? Oh, Lenny, we know what you do. <laughs> so I was around a lot of stuff early. My brain was just, Evan, if you had the opportunity to live the life I've lived, from being Crosby to Temptations to Eartha Kitt to the Jackson Five. That family, woman. Dude, you have no idea that Michael could have played short. Him and Tito could have played for the White Sox. <laughs> okay, Lenny, okay. let me draw you back in, Frank, because I'm, I'm not letting you go without an answer here. I need to know this as a fan. Okay. Was that the first time you had ever coaxed a baseball to go foul, or had you done that before? I had done it before in Boston, but nobody has a video of it. Okay. It was on the mm -hmm. first base side, and Bill, Bill Buckner – was the first baseman and Dave Kingman were, you know, my teammates with the Cubs and the ball's over there and I'm going past uh, the pitcher. I think it was Hernandez or somebody. And I'm going to make a free. I'm, I'm aggressive. I'm a military. I'm like green beret. I got to do whatever it takes to win. We got to take that hill. I was grazed by military guys. So if my first baseman shortstop and third baseman, I'm playing all five positions. I'm aggressive. I'm trying to catch every ball. So I ran all the way to the first baseline and yell the ball off the field. There's no rule. <laughs> yeah. Well, no, that... one no one mentioned it. No, have you? No, and not till we, hey, listen, they finally got a video. Finally, in Seattle, Bill Gates guys, okay, got a camera on us at all our Seattle Mariner games on the map because of guys like that. I do Bill Gates camps because I discovered him back in 81, 82, 83, 84, 85. He's still a buddy. Lenny, what are we doing next? Bill, what do you want me to do? Well, don't have any guys eat peanuts because they might have a disease. We're going to do it on our corporate uh, facility. and bring. I brought 17 Seattle Mariners with me. Julio Cruz, Dave Henderson, Larry Anderson. I brought pictures. And then afterwards, we went and did a dance for them. <laughs> <laughs> I'm a Showtime guy. Then we did a, we went, we went at Bourne Street. I said, guys, Bill's cool. We're on strike. We aren't playing for 60 days. So I'm giving each guy $1,000 a piece to come sing with me at the Bourne Street Seattle Swanee's Comedy Show with the media who's going, Lenny, I'm coming too, Ed Rare. And I just had fun. I wasn't all serious. Like, dude, Evan, if you were around celebrities your whole life since birth, would you be a, a nun or a pope? <laughs> <laughs> We are here live with Lenny Randall and Daniel Jacob Parra. Let's show the clip um, where we did we did squeeze some answer out of Lenny there. This was not the first time. He did it. And no. I, what I love about this play too, Lenny, is the home plate umpire actually correct, correctly calls it foul, and it's not till later is um, MLB need to address and tighten up the rules a little bit. But you are in baseball history forever. Uh, because of, I just, I love the brilliance and the, the quickness and thinking of something to do like this. Hey, I wanted to ask you too, Lenny. Um, it was announced today the A's are indeed going to move to, to um, Vegas. And I don't know what, if they're changing their team name or whatnot. But um, you were part of the very first Rangers team. If you want to go put your Rangers hat back on. What was that like being on that inaugural team in a new city? It's kind of simple, folks. I hear from Charlie Finley's daughter every day, Nancy Finley. My team was the Oakland A's, was a Finley team, okay? I'm going to send him the clips of me sitting with Reggie and Sal and DiMaggio as a coach. And MC Hammer used to dance with us. He was our bad boy. So I know stuff that he was after my wife, okay? I know <laughs> stuff. <laughs> I know stuff. Hey, he, he just wanted a hookup. That's part of life in Oakland. That's why they're leaving. Oh, my goodness. They, listen, I have property in Oakland, three condos on South by South Point. It's a great city. Why do you think the Raiders left? They're a little slow, but they finally woke up and left. Oakland is not a town for sports anymore. San Francisco Giants are. If they would have treated them better, it would have been better. When I would go up to Oakland, guys, humbly, I'd be – 
I knew everybody up in Oakland. We do a college expo on NCR Foundation, National College Foundation. And we've given over 400,000 scholarships. When we go to Oakland, Seattle, Spain, Cuba, we go all over. We go to Miami, we go to 500,000 kids have gotten scholarships all over the world. And then when we visit them in Miami or Dallas or Houston or Seattle, I don't go baseball. I go education. Why are you studying? Why don't you be? I told five kids, don't be a ball player. Be an umpire. Get $900 a day. They go, what? You mean I could be? I've sent two kids, Malachi Moore. Great second baseman. Could have been Willie Randolph. I said, but you get pissed off and discouraged. And you straight out of L.A. Compton area. So you'll be a role model for everybody out of L.A. because you're honest. You're honest. You tossed the parent out of the game. That's okay. The parent was drinking wine. They were toe up. They need to leave. You didn't have to call security. They respected your uniform as an umpire. When I look at you, Evan, I look at you as an umpire, sir. Yes, sir. No, sir. You said I'm out of the game. Bye. I'm going home. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> it's respect. I said it's more respect as an umpire than it is a player. Evan, let me share this with you and Daniel. Yes. Of the thousand or more to 3,000 games, I only probably got tossed once or twice in my whole life. I used to go up to the umpires, Evan, and go, how's your day? What you do last night? Dude, you need to use a new deodorant. And they go, what, you trying to tell me I think? No, off the field, not on the field. I just try to make them laugh. I don't want them to be, look, I'm not out here to bust your bubble. I'm out here, you need something, where hotel are you at? You need help, you need room service? What do you need? You need Lola Falana or you need J-Lo? Who do you need? <laughs> I, I, would, I would just let them, because they were uptight. I looked at every empire that I ever faced. And I, made, I faced 500 from Matt Sherry's kids to, to uh, Nanda's kids, any umpire. And even the guys that made a judgment on yelling the ball foul. I knew David Phillips. I knew all the whole staff. And they were like, Lenny, what the hell are you doing, man? That's so cool. Because I'm trying to win a game. I don't know what I'm doing. Yeah. I'm just trying to win a game. And he yeah. goes, never had to make that judgment call, dude. This is so cool for us. Let's <laughs> oh, there, come on. There we go. <laughs> Let's not piss off George okay. Brett. Let's not piss off Jim Fry. And that's not piss off Amos Otis because that would have been his 1,999th hit. It would have been 2,000. He was pissed off. That's why <laughs> it became a hit. <laughs> and you didn't know it. How yeah. happened? <laughs> Nobody knew. I'm giving you inside scoop. So every time I see Amos Otis, Lenny, I got to watch from him going, Lenny, thanks for my 2,000 hit, bro. That was awesome. <laughs> <laughs> Or are you going to retire or something? No, I don't know if I'm going to play next year or not. <laughs> so the things I saw right, with uh, umpires, we got a rapport. Yes. we got to have a rapport and respect with all the umpires. Yes. Um, I mean, let me think about it. If I had, go ahead. If I had Joe Torrey and Billy Martin, who the umpires were scared of, and they would tell me this, Lenny, go easy today. Don't, you know, don't, I'm a leadoff hitter. I'm going to do just call it what you see. I'm swinging at anything. If it's a ball, I'm swinging. I'm like Yogi. I would tell the umpires, I'm Yogi. If I see it, I'm hitting it. I don't need you. <laughs> if I see it, I'm hitting it. I don't trust you guys. I only trust my bat. I don't trust Blue it too. Oh, Lenny, yeah. get in the box. No, I don't. I'll tell all the kids I recruit and all 5,000 that I train. Never trust blue or two. I'd rather swing the bat, put it in play, yep. and get it fair than to watch the third strike. That means I didn't give it an effort. Yes. For youth baseball, one of the worst things a coach can do is to tell their kids to try to work a walk. Swing the bat. You ain't going to get drafted because of your walking ability as a kid. Um, can, can, can you do a high five? Bam. High five. Um, now, Daniel, pop fly. I love the um, – the checklist of pop fly. You've done some of the greatest players of all time. You've done Ricky Henderson, Tony Gwynn, Ichiro. Is this not what pop fly is really about though? The characters, the stories tell, tell me Daniel, how this project was for you. This, this particular one. This one, this one was great. Um, I'm going to put it up while I talk a little bit, but this, this one was great because you know, the, the, blowing the ball foul is sort of the, the, the gate, the gateway to, to Lenny Randall. But I got to, I got to, uh, may, may I say this, Lenny, we, I got to become friends with, Len, with Lenny over the last, uh, I know, bombshell. Is that, 
Hey, hey, Evan, that's his lawyer talking. Okay, this his son. He's <laughs> Speaking of, and speaking of my son, speaking of my son, we, we got to hang out with Lenny a couple of weeks ago. And within five minutes of meeting Lenny, my son turns to me and says, can Lenny Randall live with us? So, <laughs> and, and, and every time we go nearby, he's like, can we, can we go see, can we go see Lenny? So, so it was, it was lovely being able to get to know, like get to know the subject before doing the pop fly and uh, I think Dale Murphy was the only one I, ha I, I had that opportunity with pr prior. So it, it was great. And you're totally right, Evan, like this dig digging into the story of Lenny Randall, there is, there is so much there. there. There's much more that I left off the print that, that made it on the print, you know, like doing stand up comedy, all, all the, 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 the scholarships and the, and the, and the training, the kids that you've helped Lenny, that, the the kingdom record you know that you there's so much life lived and such a great character and ambassador for baseball and you're totally right evan that's exactly like the heart of pop fly so so lenny randall is the heart of pop fly to it to it there it is pop fly the heart ooh, ooh, let me take my heart out <laughs> <laughs> it's a bl blessing to be able to meet at an italiano restaurante mangi bene we had about an eight course meal Evan, <laughs> I saved you a plate. And Dan knew exactly what to order. Now, most kids eight don't know what to order. Tagliatelli, spaghetti, mavaroni, whatever. He was like, dude, I want to sign your picture. I had cards. I want him to sign my cards. Because I want kids to learn to spell their names and write like college. Because I had to learn that way from the guys that mentored me. So most guys today, and you guys got to witness this. You cannot read their writing. It is the worst signature in the history of sports now. They need a stamp. But Dan <laughs> wrote like a lawyer. Dan. <laughs> Daniel Jr., yes. Jr. I'm like, dude, that's pretty good. You could, you, you're my attorney. He goes, Dad, <laughs> I'm his attorney. <laughs> Mom, we're going to sell this condo or this house. Lenny's going to be staying with us. I'm going, do I have a choice? <laughs> <laughs> it was phenomenal to find out that young. Because, see, I have a homeschool, Evan. And of the homeschool kids, the 40 that I have, they're between 8 and 18. And the highest one, 17, got $9.3 million as a student. And I'm teaching all of them to write Picasso, Rembrandt, you know, write, sing, do, you know, be a person. We got to train, but you ever notice that every stadium on the planet plays music? Mm -hmm. I go, what? They go, coach, what do you mean? I said, when I train you, I'm a listener. Who let the dogs out? Woo, woo, woo. They go, coach, <laughs> coach is crazy. I go, no, coach isn't crazy. Coach believes that music inspires you to play better. It relaxes you. You all got to pick your own song. So your homework, Dan, your homework, Daniel, your homework, Evan, is to give me your songs, you two guys, when you come up to the mic right now to talk to me. What is your song? If you're a baseball player, a football player, give me your song. What is your song? There's always one. Mine was doom, doom, hee hee, doom, doom, hee hee. Michael Jackson. Always the Michael Jackson. I'm like, dude, who don't want to dance to that? And I would go, Bill Gates, what's your song? We will, we will stop you. <laughs> and my kids would go, Lenny, after camp, can I get a computer? Go talk to Bill. Okay, he, he makes them. <laughs> Are you kidding me? I don't want nothing but a computer. Or a so everybody has their vice. So Evan, what's yours? What's my song? Mm -hmm. um, I'll go something from Pearl Jam. How about? Let me hear. Uh, it. Give me some I'll, bars. I'm Come sing on. It. No, 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 no. Everybody knows two or three notes. You can You even know "Happy Birthday" to you. Come on, give me some. <laughs> okay, I'll, I'll let me go. Even flow. That's all I got. Me, come on, come on, do. Dan. No, you got to give me six bars, bro. Let's go eight. Come on, let's go. You said three notes. We're I gave you three <laughs> notes. <laughs> Nobody is here to listen to me sing. They are here to hear you talk. I might be here to this be your debut. Come on, you. Come on. You're better than Jim Brewer. Let's go. Let's go. <laughs> You're better than P. Diddy, P. Diddy, Jay Z. Come on. They don't even sing. All these, I love you, Anna. Come on. Give me something. Uh, this is me throwing my notes away for this interview right now. <laughs> and we're here live with Daniel and Lenny. <laughs> uh, Daniel, can you show this print again? Sure. This is only available until Sunday. And I dare you to do not buy this without getting the autograph. 
you need to commemorate this experience, get Lenny Randall, get his autograph, put it up on your shelf. I guarantee you, I, I never make a promise. I promise you, if you buy this and put it up, this will bring joy into your soul every day that you see it. It will bring positivity to your outlook. You will not be angry at your spouse or your kids when you have this picture in the background making you laugh thinking about MC Hammer and all sorts of things. <laughs> Get hey. this in your life. Hey, Evan, I'm yes. taking the first 10 people to an angel game with me unless they like the Dodgers I'll drop them off but I have a lifetime pass for 10 to go to any game Padres Giants Mets Yankees for the life and I might even throw in a t-shirt that I just gave uh Dan and little Dan right there so if they want to go to a game and they buy one of the the the, the, the art art collections look Dan's like Picasso Rembrandt Michael D'Angelo Bruno Ragazzi Forte come Leonardo da Vinci Artistico. And if they don't get it, they got 10 seats in a game. What the heck? All right. You might end up at an Angels game with Lenny. Probably not with Otani, but you will be there with Lenny and me. He's, he's <laughs> gone, friend. He's gone. I know. Um, he's he's going to be a Yankee, guys. Just sorry to let you know. I'm going to say Braves. I'm just taking a guess. Braves own peanuts. No money. Sorry. But the thing with the Braves is they have so many good players locked up at such small salaries. Okay. Like, Let, here's the inside scoop, guys. The marketing bring, bring Italiano and, and French and listen good, Korean and Oriental is 40 million Orientals in New York. There's only four in Atlanta. <laughs> okay. There's 50 million in guess what other city? Guess. Guess. Seattle? Dodger. Dodgers. Right. Okay. Third, Ichiro told Otani personally, I'm golfing with him. I'm talking with him. I can't give you the inside scoop. I might have to switch hats, but he's not <laughs> leaving. <laughs> he's not going to be here. He's going to be. He might. Hey, he might be here. Okay. New York and New York. The difference between the Yankees and the Mets, the Yankees outdraw the Mets. You guys know that, right? Yes. But the, the owner, Steve, has an open checkbook. So he would steal all, and, and he'll do it like sneakily robbery uh, kind of thing, but with, with passion, because he wants to win so bad that he's willing to sacrifice his daughter's salary to get Otani. Yeah, but he's paying, he's paying Verlander and Scherzer the pitch on other teams now. Hey, let me tell you a little side story. There's always a guy on the side that wants to pay for the guy on the side. In other words, those two guys that he told them to go, go to Texas, <laughs> and the other one went to... You know, he goes, I, I'll set up another deal in the background. I know what their mom and dad and uncles and agent wants. The agent will set up a deal to, even though we knew, what's the one that hurt his arm at the Texas Rangers? Come on, his former Met. Grom. Boom. And guess who else? Texas Rangers. What, Scherzer? <laughs> oops, oops, did, I, did, did, did it slip? Why Texas, folks? Oops. Why Texas? <laughs> Anybody know? Is it oil? Is it Ron Washington? Is it what is it? Give me give me something that makes you think Otani is gonna not do Hollywood, be a Dodger, be a Yankee, or be a, a Met or Seattle Mariner with all of Bill Gates computers and all fifty thousand Oriental teams with Ichiro Suzuki and Ken Griffey Jr. is going, I got this. All right, this might be the scoop. We might revisit this a couple of weeks from now. Hey, if we don't visit it, listen, Evan, you're gonna have to get me some mail, some MLB, some push-ups from the Vikings. Okay, okay. <laughs> you got to get cousin who just got hurt. Viking push-ups for what's your your team is the Angels. Who, who's your team? I'm the an Angels, Angels fan. Yeah. And, and when do you want to go to an Angel game? Uh, I'll anytime, any, anytime. Let, let, let's, let's get back to pop fly and Lenny Randall though. Uh, right, Daniel, no. Daniel if you can show this print again, this is only available until Sunday. Get that autograph option because you want the, the physical hand of Lenny touching this as well. Daniel, is there a fan question um, that has sparked your interest that you can share? 
There is a lot of a lot of love for me <laughs> in, 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 in the chat. Um, this is probably the most lit up the chat has been ever. Uh, Lenny, there, Let's there's, go! A lot of, there's a lot of good questions here, Lenny, for you. And I'm gonna ask. This was this is for the giveaway. Um, and I'd like to know this too myself. Um, Jeff West asked, Lenny, you have an amazing personality. Have you? There's there's a lifetime pass right there. Lenny's holding up. Let me let me uh, show that on the screen there. Oops. There we go. Here's Lenny's lifetime passes. So Lenny, you have an amazing personality. Have you considered an analyst or on-camera career in MLB? Well, I'm That's thinking Jeff. of doing it. I got to talk to my agent, Dan. He's eight years old. He wants to do it with Bryce uh, Randall. Uh, they're both 10 and eight. So I'm thinking kids have more creativity with their lives than us adult parents, former players, and current broadcasters, because their little genius is doing Fortnite and doing all of the technology stuff from uh, any analysis. I mean, Hollywood's so nervous right now that they're going to put in a fake Tom Cruise leading off for the Dodgers. Okay, <laughs> it's Anything's possible now. So when I look at what I'm going to do with you guys and your tent, Evan, this is your card. I'm going to meet you at gate two. Okay. This is a this is a a fifty thousand dollar pass, Evan. When we walk up to the window, you're gonna Lenny's my brother. No, I'm gonna tell him we're twins. <laughs> you are like Willy Wonka with the golden ticket right now in we're every twins. possible way. And, and then you're gonna say, "Oh, Lenny, guess what? I want to go to a movie. Oh, which one? The most interesting man in baseball? Talent for the game with Edward James almost Lorraine Branca, or do you want a lifetime SAG card and go to any movie?" On the in a mall and not get mugged and have all the popcorn you want and not stand in line and go straight to the theater and sit right next to Dan who's gonna be the the movie guy going up in the booth because he's a digital genius see and me and his son will be doing a podcast at one of the movie sites or at Angel Stadium <laughs> with with six. Former angel guys. See, they drive me nuts when I see them because I'm, I'm, a, I like talking to them. Bob Gritch, I'll talk to. Clyde Wright, I'll talk to. The Desense, watch out. Rudy Law, Derek, I, I talk to all the guys. You got no personality with me today. If you don't hang with me, go to left field. Get out of here. Because the kids want a picture of you. They want to. You don't want to take a picture. You haven't taken one in 20 years. They don't even know who you are. Get over here. And they go, Lenny, dang, bro, you cold. I go, no. Well, you want me to hide your feelings? I'm not hiding your feelings. <laughs> if you're a butt, you're a butt. If you're light now, be light. If you're, if you, it's time for you to change your image. And they go, dude, how come you so hard on me? No, it's your five ex girlfriends. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Daniel, is there another question? <laughs> uh, let's see. Let's see. Um, well, first of all, actually, everyone in the chat, drop in, drop in your music. What's your song? Let me ask us earlier. What's your song? What's your walk up song? I want to hear your walk up song. Um, let's see. Um, so Logan Swink, he's asking you, Lenny. Okay. So you, you've, been, you've been around a lot of baseball, Lenny. You, 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 you have lived seven lifetimes in one. So his question to you is, who do you think would be the most interesting player or manager to be the next pop fly subject? So, so who's, who's the most interesting, the next most interesting okay. person or manager in baseball? Okay. <laughs> Guys, th this is very, I can laugh. Washington, who won a World Series almost in Texas Rangers, who was the Atlanta Brave who left to get rehabbed and get back to the major league level. He's going to be the manager of this hat. Mm -hmm. And you're going to meet him, Evan. And I've known him for 20 years. We talk on the side. I talk to players different than I do if they never played or never hit or never. I treat everybody the same. I don't care if you had a hot dog or pizza or a fart. It doesn't matter. You're the same guy. So when I go to Ryan, Lenny, Lenny, get over here, man. Get over here. Phil Nevin, I had to get him. I said, Phil, you're too uptight, man. What happened to the guy that was in high school and in college at Fullerton? Well, I was different. Then. Well, why go back there being that guy? You're a jerk now. Dude, why are you calling me a jerk? I got it from a million people. I read it. I didn't see it. I read it. So you better act looser, you know, or go, go to the beach or something because people want personalities and they want you to win. So when I look at guys like you guys and what's going to happen in a, with the Angels, there's rumor that Mike Trout might want to be a Philadelphia Philly. Give me a little inside scoop. Now, would Ryan be able to change Mike Trout and go, right, Mike, do what you want. 
We almost won without Otani, before Otani. We almost won. Okay. What is the difference? Small ball. Mike Social, small ball, playoffs. We didn't have to go dinger. Everybody hit for an average. They hit 260 or better, 270 or better. Everybody's trying to get 200 hits. That was a goal out of the womb. Now mm -hmm. it's not even like, I just want to get two dingers in a week. That's going to change your life. That's going to get you fired or relieved. Go back to go old school. None of this, yep. this new school average stuff. Forget, just hit 290, Tony Gwynn, Templeton, George Brett. I mean, we did stuff that people, oh my God. Tell me, go ahead, guys. Don't names pop right up. Hit the ball, first to third, don't strike out. Abs you got me. Put, no, dude, when we go to a game, Evan, and if we ever get Dan out of, out of, out of prison, we're going to go straight to the field, and we're going to yell together, Evan, never trust blue with two strikes. <laughs> And then the oh. guy's going to look, that's Lenny freaking Randall. That's Lenny freaking Randall. Every guy I teach, now 200 to 400 kids, you have, I don't care if they roll, if they bounce it up there, swing at it. I don't yep. trust you. I rather, dude, I used to work with Vladimir Guerrero, ball on the ground, hit it. One bounce, boom, hit it. Like tennis. I teach tennis. I play golf. I'm a six-sport guy. You want to play badminton? Fine. You want to play tennis? Fine. You want to play golf? Fine. You want to play volleyball? Fine. I think every athlete on the planet in America do six sports for one freaking scholarship. Why not? Yeah. Why not Dan be not only a sports lawyer, but play tennis, golf, ping pong, volleyball? Hey, why not? Why not do, do, do volleyball and spike or swimming? Michael, the, the swimmer. Come on, come on. What's the swimmer's name? Mike what? Come on, guys. But if we didn't know that name, if he didn't swim, would we know him? If he didn't do something great? No. And he quit, and he's 6'5". He could have freaking dunked. <laughs> <laughs> he could have played basketball. So do six sports and find your passion. I'll train you. And we'll let Pop, you you want to film it, Mike? Hey, hey, you want, you want him to film it? We'll let our agent film it. I would do a show right. off the 13 year old kid. Dude, you guys know that. Listen, this is really what's happening now because we didn't grow up like this. Name, image, and licensing is a whole new bargain. We got a kid $150,000, four years old, playing tennis and baseball and golf and flag. Not tackle, flag. My thing is don't get a concussion, play flag until you're 16, 17, 18. Parents, don't get a freaking concussion. Why you think Tiger quit? Do flag. Tiger was like football. I used to raise that sucker in Cypress Hill with Scott, one of the head coaches. Ha, Lenny, I like hitting. The, I play tennis, play golf, play softball, but don't tackle yes. at Stanford. Don't go to Stanford and tackle the court. Dude, you're good at that. Listen to your dad. Let's do six sports. You're going to find your passion. It might be singing like freaking Evan, rock star. Evan's a rock star. <laughs> he wants to go on freaking uh, YouTube and do a, what one of those. You know, when you go to those shows where you ad lib and you do the, uh, the fakes, you know, singing with your buddies and you go out and you do rehearsals. Oh, karaoke, yeah. Yeah, he's he, Evan, do me a karaoke, bro. Okay. <laughs> we'll do it. Again. Hey, hey, Evan. We're gonna do it at Angel Stadium, man. You karaoke, let's go. <laughs> uh, <laughs> roll out the barrel. We'll is there another the question that we can have Lenny <laughs> ignore, Daniel? We're really gonna do that. We're gonna do a song. <laughs> I feel like this is like the baseball version of Pee Wee's Playhouse right now. <laughs> With all compliment and love, Lenny, I love you. <laughs> it's hey, every day of my life is Christmas. I don't need no tree. <laughs> I don't need a light bulb. Make every day like Christmas and your birthday every day. Why celebrate the one day, one year? Every day you wake up, you should be blessed that you're doing what you're doing so you can do yes. more. I had a lot of friends leave because they were 29, 38, and stupid to go do. Don't go there. You try to advise them, don't do that. Don't and then what they pick is is sad. I mean, you hear about it like, oh my God, are you kidding me? COVID? You don't care? You don't want to wear a mask? You don't? Want, okay, well, it's your life. Nice meeting your knuckles. See ya. <laughs> so when when I meet you, Evan, it's gonna change your life. 
People gonna uh, remember. Uh, when, is, when is Evan gonna sing a song, bro? When is it coming out? <laughs> You know, I do. Uh, baseball wise, I love something that you said, Lenny. I think the worst play in baseball that infuriates me more than anything, and I cannot handle, is there's a runner at third with okay. less than two outs, and the batter watches strike three. That is that is the worst play in baseball. Are you with me? No outs, one out. How many outs? Just less than two outs. All okay. we don't need. We need a fly ball or a grounder to second, and you're gonna look at strike three. I grew up with the greatest historical managers and players in the baseball game, Ted Williams and Billy Martin and Joe Torrey. Man in third, one out, no out. You coming home. We either going to bunt you in, squeeze you in, you still in home, or you putting the ball in play. And if yes. you don't hit her, I got $500 fine on you. Yes. Okay, I got a $1,000 fine on you. And we're thinking, oh, my God, I'm going to be broke by the end of the day. So. You better put the ball in play for the kangaroo court if you didn't, because all the pitchers, dude, I'm with Tom Seaver. I'm with Jerry Kruzman. I'm with Craig Swan. I'm with Job Matlack. I'm with the greatest Skip Lockwood. I can go do I go uh, Horoski. I can name Tommy John. I'm uh, name somebody, Ron Goodry. I'm with some of the greatest pitchers in the history. Fergie Jenkins, dude. I'm getting a hit. I'm getting my go over. I need two runs today. And he's freaking Canadian with a hockey stick and a basketball stick and play with the with the Harlem Globetrotters and go, I need two runs. We go, that's it? Just two runs? And he says, I got a one point ERA. They can't hit me. I'm nipping. Three inches out, three inches in. Umpire likes me. He likes Canadians. Okay. <laughs> so when I'm with a team that says, look, squeeze the guy in. Jerry Grody used to get pissed. I mean, he almost yell at us. Because a guy on third, what the frick are you swinging? Your own teammates, let alone the other team. David, Dave Parker, Bill Madlock, and, and, and all the guys that I played against. The other team's going, dude, what is he doing? Blue Brock telling me, huh, dude, get the run in. I'm with, I'm with Leroy Neiman as a fan. He's sitting in the dugout painting us going, there's a guy third. What's Tory going to do? I go, guy third, no outs. Leroy, <laughs> You paint the picture of the guy not scoring because it's going to sell. And it's going to sell because Lou Rock's standing there with both hands on his legs. I said, I'm, let me draw it first. And he goes, Lenny, you draw it first. And then if you don't score, I'm going to sell it. <laughs> I'm going, this is small. And he, drew, and he drew it. And he sold it. But my point is, we play with a guy on third. He's getting in. Yes. Or you gonna, your wife and kids are going to leave you. You're going to not home. You got, you're not getting to the car. We're going to take your car. You don't get on third with, hey, why is he at third? We want to win. We yes. want to go home. We're having fun. Dude, just get one run. Just yeah, think, though, yeah. Evan, if every kid could knock in one run a day, we can't do it. But we think about, God, one good run. Good game. Yes. Are you kidding me? If, if little Dan can get me one pizza a day, dude, I tell his dad to go jump in a lake or something, you know? <laughs> oh, <laughs> but, <laughs> but the thing about the game, it, we had players that had more charisma and pride than today's guys. I hate to say it like it is, folks. Man on third, he's coming in. He's going to squeeze him in, burn him in, still home. Sacrifice fly. We had drills like that every day. And the mm -hmm. agents had no part of the player. You can't have an agent go tell the owner, look, you got to leave my – no, agents, you're fired. I can give him what he wants. Because they don't realize that Corey, it's eight years old, playing – you played at what age? Eight, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, and quit at what eighteen? You know that it has that vision to play until yeah, the eighteen, yeah. and then reality is like, oh my God, I gotta go to college. I gotta go to Europe. My coach doesn't like me. I have no scholarship. I panic. Oh, I'm going to the army. <laughs> they don't know what to do. I see it every day, guys. And all our parents should have our kids play six sports. You play six sports, you'll find your soccer passion. I'm in Italy. With Maradona and Bruno Conti, Piero Bravo, Pelotero, Giocatore Italiano, and Sam Bruno. And I go, Bruno, shouldn't you play baseball with the Yankees, Lenny? They only offered me 100000 I'll get $4 million with soccer. <laughs> and, I, and I'll have to go to Yankee Stadium and pay 200000 for a house or a car or gas. I, I did economics. I go, wow, you're a smart cat. Most guys are not that smart. So when I look at all the stories, there's a story behind the story. If you go to New York and play, it's more expensive than Anaheim. If you go to, if you go to, uh, no offense, guys, 
Atlanta is peach cobbler, okay? And when weeds, it has no image at all about food. Hank Aaron got out, went to Milwaukee, came back. I hung out with Hank Aaron, played tennis with him once a month, and Dusty Baker. And we would talk about what we're going to do with our lives, baseball, away from America, baseball in Japan. I took Hank Aaron, Ernie Banks, um, Dick, uh, uh, Roy White, Killebrew, and um, Bob Gibson. I took them all to Italy and Bill North and George Foster and, D and John, um, the pitcher, uh, Italian, uh, Jamaski. And I said, listen, guys, play in Europe. Or play in Japan. They treat you different. Watch. I, go, Dude, I said, I got Sahi Beer sponsor. Everybody gets five grand. Boom. That's it. I don't want nothing. And guess who said I'll take the five grand first? Rachel Jackson, Jackie Robinson's wife. I told all the wives and girlfriends, you coming with Lenny. You guys go out going shopping. We're going to go get what? Pearls. I'm going to Wally Yomanik's Pearl Shop in my limo. Who's going? 14 girls. Tommy Agee. I'm going. I'm going. <laughs> Dude, you take a Tommy Agee wife or girl or their jewelry and you bring it to America, it's worth three to five thousand dollars for one piece of jewel. I mean, come on. You got to get smart. See the world. Baseball's in up in the 31 countries. That was the oh, Evan. That was the first world baseball classic. Yeah, and players that I named Rennie Sten is going. I'm not going back to America. I'm staying in Japan. <laughs> I'm staying with Nomo and uh, and Sadaharo. Saro Lenny, I want to golf with you and Hank. No, no, let's play tennis. <laughs> I'm sick of that. Let's play tennis. I'll go. Okay, we'll play tennis. I'll get a court. Everybody has their other passion. So when you see a player, they got to look beyond just the game. They're there for a reason. What's your next step, Evan? Should you be a major league player or umpire? Hmm. Hey, I guess Dan and I might find you. I, I, I'm going to tell my attorney, little Dan, that you want to be a major league umpire. Only in Anaheim. You don't want to go on the road. <laughs> well, um, we are past the 45-minute marker. Um, Daniel, can you show this print one last time? Get... <laughs> Oh my God. Like it's right so now, go to potfivepopshot.com. Get your Lenny Rando print, reserve it. It is it is retired forever this Sunday. Get the autograph option. You, we need this in our lives because <laughs> we will not sweat the small stuff. Let mm -hmm. this voice of inspiration just like pierce the darkness and remind us there's a, let's have joy in life, let's have fun in life. Um, I can't imagine fighting with my wife with little Lenny Rando on the mantle behind me telling me like, <laughs> hey, have fun. So get your Lenny Rando print. Get the autograph option. Somebody make a movie about this man. It will mm -hmm. need to be five hours long, but we will all go to see it. Lenny will go for free with his card. <laughs> Somebody make a movie about this man. I need to see him playing tennis <laughs> in Japan. I need to see him in Italy. And who knows, maybe Daniel Jr. will be in a scene in this movie. Yep. Lenny Randall, for the first time ever, I'm going to stand up and applaud for this interview. Oh thank you God. so much for your time, friend. Oh, thank Punk you, guys. Do <laughs> you have a last oh. word for us, Lenny? Yeah. Ciao. Grazie. Arrivederci. Auguri. Grazie. Para tutti bella. And I want Dale Murphy in the Hall of Fame, for those that don't know that he should be in the Hall of Fame, with Billy Martin, okay, with Veda Pinson, okay, I could go on, Gary Templeton, but I've got too much time. Hey, fans, love the game globally. Listen, mm -hmm. even the guy with the Dodgers is from freaking Canada, first baseman, what's his name? Freeman? Hey, he's a free man. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, I Dallas. say that. <laughs> hey, we're going to a game, bro. So you got to pick a day. In fact, okay. if you want to go, when I fly back, if you want to go next week and have a private meeting with Ron and the staff or Tim Mead, who's a former vice president and all that, I talk to them on a daily basis because they don't know how to have fun like me. No, They're, many, out. They're bored. I'm like, dude, I'm not bored. Huh? 
Go ahead. I'm an Atlanta Braves fan, so 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 it, it's it was very sad to lose Ron Washington from from the Braves, but glad to have him close to close to home. Do you know that every player is going to have another title on their back, including Evan? When Evans gets fired from from Empire and Ventura, he's going to get hired in Compton, Long Beach, and Whittier. <laughs> <laughs> you got to be known as the Empire, dude. You have a whole new image now, Evan. <laughs> Everybody, oh, I want Evan to come on, but he seemed like a nice, fair guy. Woo, why not? Let me see your call, guy, on first. What's your call? How do you make a call? Are you like dramatic? Or are you like, I got one down. We got one down. Let's play ball. What are you like? Because you got to have some charisma. I You got to call it in sync with how intense the play was. If it's a, a routine, mm-hmm. boring play, he's out. If it's a banger, Boom! Let's go. Oh, that's yeah. what I'm talking about. Do that you again. Near the play. Do that again. That's what I'm talking about. Do that again. Man. Bam! Give me something. Oh, <laughs> uh, Lenny Rando. Make, I will. It, last call, guy. Still second or home? What's your call? How you gonna make it? You gonna wait, or you gonna be quick to make it? Are you gonna, gonna tease take, everybody? Go ahead. I'm give gonna me the take call. my time and make sure the catcher has the ball. I'm not gonna call it quick and have the ball on the ground and look like a moron calling him out when the ball's in the grass. I want to wait, wait, wait. Show me the ball. Show me the ball. There's the ball. Bam. Bam. That's what I'm talking about, folks. See, <laughs> hey, Angels, you better hire this guy. Okay. <laughs> Lenny, I will be there yeah. in Anaheim with you. I look forward to it. Thank you for your time today. Somebody make the movie. Lenny Randall. <laughs> All right. Thank you, Lenny. Take care. Grazie. Hey, tell my agent lawyer I want to talk to him at uh, uh, Anthony's. <laughs> I will. I will. I'll deliver That's the message. What I- Ciao, ciao, ciao. Buona notte, auguri, buco lupo. Thank you, Lenny. I, 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 hopefully that was goodbye. But I don't know if that, <laughs> I didn't understand the, the. I have no words. I have no was... idea what to say right now. Um, I reiterate, this is part of the beauty of Pop Fly. Mm-hmm. That I know the fans want King Griffey. I know they want a Bo Jackson. You hear it all the time. This is what we need sometimes. We need to talk mm-hmm. about the characters of baseball. Totally, totally agree. And I, I didn't know that when I started Pop Fly. I started with Will Clark, and then I went to Hank Aaron, you know. But then I the, the project informed me, and I'm and I'm so glad of where where it went. Um, it, it's it's crossed my path with some amazing guys, and, and Lenny is at the top, the top of that list. And my family loves him. Baseball loves him. It's just such such a such a just a great a, a great character and a great great guy, a great human. Hmm. Yeah, like we um, he would not come up in our basic conversation of today. Um, mm-hmm. You know, um, he, he would he's he's not going to just pop into our stream of consciousness. And that's what Pop Fly is so great at is you you point us towards people to say. Let's talk about somebody. Let's think about somebody's career. Let's look at their life and reflect on it. And and I did mean that with all sincerity of um, before we started, Daniel and I were talking about just as parents, it's so easy mm-hmm. to get overly flustered at things that in the grand scheme of things, they don't matter that much. And mm-hmm. that's what, the, what he's just exuding is life is supposed to have joy and it's supposed to have fun. And I just mm-hmm. think anything that we're bothered by in life it just seems like pointless when you hear this man just tell stories. <laughs> yeah, uh, absolutely. Ex- ex- experiences everything, like everything. And so sque- squeeze every drop of experience out, out of life as you can. I totally agree. Well, um, I know there's some other prints that you have going on right now. Um, mm-hmm. You want to quickly give our listeners uh, what do you have active and when are they, um, how long are they good for? Sure. Um, I don't have any images with them right now, but we have um, we have uh, Willie McCovey up for about another week. Stretch. And what's that? I said stretch. Yep, yep. That's 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 what he's featured as on the piece. Um, and uh, we've got Emlyn Tunnel, Emlyn the Gremlin, uh, f- football from football player from way back when, New York Giants and the Green Bay Packers. That is retiring. Um, on Sunday as well as Lenny Randall, the most interesting man in baseball, his piece is retiring on Sunday. So grab it before you can't. That was an incredible interview. Uh, every, every interaction with Lenny is an experience and, uh, 
we, 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 we love them tremendously and you can see why. Uh, yeah, go to popflightpopshow.com, parlay those prints together. You can uh, bundle them for shipping purposes. Get it, that autograph option. Commemorate this experience. I promise you, every time you look at that print, you'll smile because you'll just remember <laughs> this um, genius and child bundled in together, uh, just having a joy about life. Yeah. Daniel, thanks for curating this experience. Um, who knows where it might lead? Maybe we'll, we will be at a game in Anaheim together. Who knows? And uh, we're going to be listening to Even Flow, the Pearl Jam, as you walk onto the field. <laughs> oh <my laughs> Never did God. you think that you were going to be singing at, a, at an interview. I'm so, oh. glad I got off, I, I'm so glad I got off the hook without, without having to sing. Thank you. Thank you, Lenny, uh, that I didn't have to sing. <laughs> uh, did not think I signed up for that today. Um, <laughs> Top Fly, it's been a joy and a treasure. I hope it was as much fun for you as it was torturous for me. Hope to see you all real soon. See ya. Bye, everybody.